friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Advanced Test Manager Certification. We are in chapter six talking about the test tools and automation and continuing still with 6.2 tool selection. And as a part of today's tutorial, we are going to understand about the selection process. Of course, we have recalled this matter a lot of time as a part of this chapter that what exactly a selection process is and what's the responsibility of a test manager here will be. And of course, recalling your understanding from the foundation layer, foundation syllabus that what exactly are the factors to be considered before selecting a tool like uh, evaluating the maturity of the organization process, evaluating the cost benefit ratio, and making sure that what exactly the requirement is, evaluating the vendor, and a lot many other things. We will be further elaborating this approach in order to understand in more detail that what exactly can influence your selection process and what kind of uh, questions can be asked from the different steps or different phases of the entire testing lifecycle in order to make sure that the tool meets the desired expectations and return you the investment or returns you with that benefit what you are actually expecting to be returned from the tool. Now, the test tools are a long-term investment. We generally do not look forward to a tool for a short duration because if it is for the short duration, you can better do that without the tool. Now, if it is, of course, for the long term, then the tool has to be considered with several factors. Now, these tools, as they are considered for the long-term investment, likely extended over many iterations of a single project and applicable to many projects. So it's not just limited to one particular project. Sometimes you roll out a tool organization-wide. That means sometimes you talk about the test management tools and these test management tools can be used by any number of projects within your organization. For example, if I'm talking about ALM, I'm talking about Atlassian Jira. Now, Jira is something which can be used by any of your project teams within your organization, be it support, be it Scrum, be it ticketing solutions, be it maintenance project, anything. They all can manage their tasks within the Jira. So something like that is what we are talking about. Now, a test manager must consider a prospective tool from several different viewpoints. And what are those viewpoints is what we are looking on this particular slide here. Number one, to the business. Now, what do you mean by to the business? A positive ROI is required to the business because business is always aware about or, you know, wondering about that what kind of return we are going to expect when we are investing so much from the budget. And if that return is not expected, we don't have certain use cases with us to showcase that this is what the output will be and how long will it take to return us the benefits, then it is of no use. So, to the business, a positive ROI is very important or required. In order to obtain a high value in their investment, the organization should ensure that those tools that must interoperate, which may include both the test tools and the non-test tools, work together. In some cases, the process and connectivity for the tool usage must be improved to achieve this interoperability, and this can take some time to achieve. I think I would have spoken about this word earlier in my tutorials of the test manager, that is interoperability. Interoperability basically stands for data exchange between the tools. Now, what exactly this data exchange uh, could be all about? For example, I have a test management tool, which is not for the automation testing or executions, but I may have another tool, which is for automation execution. Now, I want to capture all the automation tests being executed in the test management tool. I can do that manually, but if I can set up an interoperability between these two tools, I can further minimize my manual efforts or make most out of that presence of both the tools together. So that's where the interoperability must be established in order to minimize your efforts to further extend and capture all the events what you do in the other tools right in one particular tool. Coming to the next is to the project. Like what kind of considerations we should have from the to the project? That is to the project, the tool must be effective. That's the most important thing for the project because if I'm making use of a tool, it must be as effective as possible so that we can do our activity seamlessly without any kind of interruptions, disruptions, and just make sure that everything works the way it is supposed to work or why exactly we got this tool for. So the tool may require an appreciable amount of time in order to start earning the positive ROI. So do not expect that you got the tool today and you can expect the benefits right from tomorrow. It takes some time to make people familiar with the tool and return the 
right benefit what you're expecting for. So in many cases, ROI may occur in the second release or during the maintenance rather than during the initial project when the automation was implemented. The test manager should consider the total life cycle of the application and then return or talk about or calculate the return on investment. On the third, we are talking about to the person who uses the tool. That means right to the engineer level or the QA level who are making use of the tools. The tool must support the project members in doing their tasks in a more efficient and effective way. Of course, the activities what you were doing without the tool was hectic. Now the activity what you want to replace with the tool is going to support the members who are using it. So minimizing the manual effort will be the main object of using the tool. And if that doesn't happen, the tool is of no use. So consider that the tool should be helping each and every individual who are using the tool in terms of minimizing their effort and maximizing the efficiency of the individual. So the learning curve must be conceded to ensure the users will be able to learn the tool quickly with minimum stress. That means you try to set up some of the tutorials, guidelines, which helps them to understand and follow the way of making use of the tool. And when first introduced, the tools require training and mentoring for the users, that's for sure. So these are some of the uh, specific considerations from different aspects. Let's have a look on something more here. When it comes to other factors to be considered or what exactly this you know, selection process is all about. So here we are just quickly recalling the points from the foundation. So I won't be elaborating them. If you want to elaborate, you can definitely go back to the foundation level tutorial of my channel and talk about it. So in order to ensure that all the viewpoints are taken into account, it is important to create a roadmap for the test tool introduction. That means lay out a plan to you know, let everyone know that you're getting a new tool and how exactly this tool is going to help you, what kind of features has it got, what kind of you know amenities it is going to give you, what kind of benefits is going to add to the process. So when the people are aware of it, you can definitely make most out of it. And that requires a wonderful roadmap to be decided that how you are going to roll out this tool. The selection process of the test tool was already discussed in the foundation level as follows. So you generally talk about assessing the overall maturity of the organization, identifying the requirements for the tool, that why do you need it, evaluate the tool by conducting proof of concept, that is POC, evaluate the vendor for poor or good services, identify the internal requirements of coaching, evaluate training needs, consider the current test team automation skills, and estimate the cost-benefit ratio. So these are all discussed in the foundation. We will move to the next now. The more important thing here is to talk about what exactly we should be looking forward to the capabilities of making use of tool. For each type of tool, regardless of the testing phase in which it is to be used, a test manager should consider the following capabilities. Now, what kind of capabilities are we talking about? That means a tool is just not meant for a specific reason. Sometimes we have to get started with it much earlier in the life cycle of testing, or sometimes a tool caters you from end to end of the entire life cycle. So we just need to analyze and understand that how this tool will contribute in different phases. And if it has got any kind of support, then we must make use of it. So let's start with the very first phase that is test analysis, where we talk about analyzing the requirements and gathering uh, all the test conditions. So here we say that, will the tool be able to understand the input what is given? And is the tool suited for the purpose? So input in the terms of like, if I'm capturing the test conditions, if I'm gathering the requirements or listing the requirements here, then will the tool be able to understand that or not? What do you mean by that? Well, probably like for example, requirement, then requirements, priority, details, status, linkage to the test cases, traceability, a lot of other things are related to it. So my tool should provide me all these facilities in order to manage my test analysis phase within the tool. Similarly, for the next phase, that is design. Will this tool help design testware based on the existing information? Sometimes like your tools give you facilities to convert your requirements directly into the test cases. Can the design be generated automatically? Yes, that could also be possible. You can have an automated step to convert all your steps or requirement details into the test cases or convert that into a script sometime. Can the actual test where code be generated or partially generated in a maintainable or usable format? That means something like, you know, Selenium IDE, like you can write the steps or you can record the steps and the same thing can be converted into script. 
Can the necessary test data be generated automatically? That means if your tool supports you to do the data preparation part, then will that be possible? If not all the tools have this feature, but I'm just talking about that if you are making use of a tool, you answer these questions so that you can be aware of that what your tool can actually cater you with. Similarly, moving to the next part of it and the remaining phases, data and test selection. That means selection of the test executions. So how does the tool select the data? That means do we have to manually put it or we have to just write a simple line and it will directly interact with the Excel sheets or XML or text documents and import all the data. So we just need to determine that particular path or face or line of code which will interact with the data and capture it. Can the tool accept selection criteria entered either manually or automatically? Can the tool determine how to scrub production data based on the selected inputs? Scrub, of course, stands for here, removing the unwanted content which might not be required at that point of time. So we basically write control flows for this or kind of you know automation control flows to determine or scrub the data which you need at that point of time by leaving out all the unwanted data. Can the tool determine which tests are needed based on the coverage criteria? Can it determine? So you generally make use of uh, hybrid frameworks, keyword-driven frameworks uh, to help you with that. So whether the tool is capable enough to design a keyword-driven framework or not. When it comes to the execution, will the tool run automatically or will manual intervention be required? That means, is there a certain possibility that you just play on us and everything can run automatically? Sometimes the tools have the capabilities of scheduling an automated execution. That means you can determine a date and time and even if you're not present, the test will automatically launch. How does the tool stop and restart? Like, you know, kind of exception handling or maybe error handling. You can include a lot of your recovery scenarios. Should the tool be capable of listening for pertinent events? Now, that's from the point of uh, certain updates which may happen and there are some tracking done to it or traceability done to it. So will it prompt us to do or make some necessary changes automatically or not? Similarly, when it comes to the evaluation, how will the tool determine if it has received the proper results or not? Like kind of test oracles which you can make use of. So test oracle is another thing which we generally used for comparing the expected and actual results. So do you have the features of including some of the events based on the input like what is expected and what is actual and get the results according to that? For example, checkpoints. Checkpoints in automation can help you to check that whether the expected was equal to actual or not. What type of error recovery capabilities does the tool process? Does the tool provide adequate logging and reporting for auditing purposes? So there are a lot of such things which you can actually answer during selection of a tool process in order to uh, determine that how exactly the tool will be benefiting you and where all it can be applicable enough. Because not, I'm not saying that all the question must be yes, that it should support. There are tools who support 50% of these options, 70% of these options, or sometimes 100% of these options. So it's just that you have to answer that where all your tool will be best utilized, and if it has got a feature, you need to make sure that you make use of it. Then only you can talk about a great positive return on investment. Otherwise, you know a feature exists, but you don't make use of it. Of course, you will have a negative ROI. So. That's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.